Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back for another video, and today we're going to be reacting to Driving on the Autobahn, an explanation of German road signs and traffic rules, and this directly follows our video yesterday where we reacted to the German public's reaction to an ambulance, and I figured why not keep it going with some driving related content since, I don't know, it was really interesting to me to see that and shocking. So the Autobahn, everyone's heard of the Autobahn at some point, just an absolute feat that the German government has come up with and can't really be implemented anywhere else. I don't know of any other place that has a road with no speed limit. Certainly nothing like that exists in the United States. And along with that, we'll be learning about some German road signs and traffic rules because we don't really know how to drive in Germany. And I'm, I'm wondering if the pulling over for the ambulance will be mentioned in this video. It has to be, right? That has to have been a law. Some of you guys were saying in the comments that you can actually be penalized uh, legally if you don't pull over and get in some big trouble, some fines. So that was really interesting to me. Appreciate you guys for commenting on that video, and uh, hopefully you'll leave some on here as well. So hit the like button, hit subscribe. Let's get right into this. Hallo zusammen. So the other day, my mother and I helped my good friend Nina moving out of her flat in Lichtenau in North Rhine-Westphalia. And on the way back, I decided to film our ride on the German Autobahn a little bit. I know that many of you guys are interested in and fascinated by the German highway system, how it works, what's the deal with speed limits and the like. This video does not only show us driving on the Autobahn, but I also explain common road signs and traffic rules. Alright, alright, let's go or drive for it. Every Fahrt, meaning every ride on the Autobahn begins before actually being on the Autobahn, of course. And no, I wasn't talking about farts, <laughs> although it sounds very similar to die Fahrt, I gotta admit that. And well, apparently Lichtenau is quite a village in a way, because... Why not? Everyone should drive to the local supermarket in a golf cart. Anyway, right now we're driving on a Landstraße, a country road so to speak. Take me home. Ah uh, well, we're taking ourselves home, so don't worry. There are loads of Landstraßen in all parts of Germany, and they usually connect cities and regions. They don't belong to a city though, so you're usually allowed to drive faster than 50 km per hour. On a Landstraße, the maximum allowed speed is 100 km per hour, as long as it's not limited otherwise, for instance to 70 km per hour, which is another very common allowed speed limit on Landstraßen. The next Autobahn entrance, the Autobahn Auffahrt, is indicated on several signs as well. Blue is a typical color for Autobahn related information. So I, I think what I remember hearing about the Autobahn that is a common misconception is that the entirety of the Autobahn isn't like just not regulated. You can go as fast as you want. I believe there's only a specific section of the Autobahn where there's no speed limit, so to speak. But I guess that'll be explained in this video. So far, really interesting though. And I like the I like the narration. Now we're right in front of the Auffahrt onto the Autobahn 44, the A44, the Autobahn 44, or as a short form, the A44. Because technically, there is not only one Autobahn in Germany, but a lot of them. We okay. refer to them by saying A and an additional number. In order not to become a Geisterfahrer, a ghost rider so to speak, these things can really save lives. So make sure to stay on this lane, therefore. And talking about it, the lane you're driving on when you're right about to enter the actual part of the Autobahn is called der Einfädelungsstreifen. It's important to increase your speed on this lane before entering the actual Autobahn. The Verkehr, the traffic that's already driving on the Autobahn has the Vorfahrt, by the way, the right of way or priority. This orange pillar you're seeing here can come in quite handy in an emergency case in which your own phone might not work, for instance. This oh. is called a Notrufsäule, an emergency call pillar. That's the literal translation. It's basically a public emergency phone. These orange phones are spread every two kilometers across the Autobahn. And in total, there are over 17... 17,000 emergency phones. Are you serious? We don't have anything like this in the United States. 
Oh my God. Thousand emergency phones on over 13,000 kilometers on the German Autobahn. When you are suffering a panne, a breakdown, or an unfall, an accident on the Autobahn, it's important to wear your Warnweste, your high visibility vest, and also to set up your Warndreieck, your breakdown triangle, 150 to 400 meters away in front of your breakdown location. It's mandatory to always have such a vest and triangle in your car, by the way. Yeah, definitely not mandatory in the United States. Definitely not mandatory here. I believe it's also mandatory in um, Belgium because I was sent a vest before. These little blue now, signs often get role. overlooked and in normal traffic they aren't that important to drivers anyway. The number they show is the respective length of the Autobahn up until this point, pretty much. And this information could come in very handy when you're actually having a panne, a car breakdown, and in order to get help from a panne service, a car breakdown service, so to speak, you might have to explain where you are on the Autobahn. On the German Autobahn, there's a Richtgeschwindigkeit, a recommended or target speed of 130 km per hour. Yes, fast. it's also true though that there are certain parts of the Autobahn without a speed limit, but this isn't the case for the Autobahn as a whole. In fact, there are many there parts is. with a speed limit. Okay, I was right, let's go. Changing lanes is only allowed when there is a gestrichelte Linie, a broken or dashed line, by the way. Otherwise, you have to remain on your respective lane. Rhyme, rhyme. For the most part, this Autobahn, the A44, features two Fahrbahnen, two lanes. You're only allowed to überholen to overtake cars on the left lane, though. From the A44, which we're driving on right now, we could also decide to change onto the A33 to Bielefeld. That would mean we had to exit this Autobahn and enter the A33. We're gonna stay on the A44 to Dortmund though. And it's actually pretty difficult to pronounce things in an English way when there are German words in between. Yeah. The green E331 refers to an Europastraße. There are many European roads that often lead through and connect many different European countries. In this case though, the E331 only leads through Germany and it bridges the distances between the towns of Dortmund and Kassel. Parts of the E331 are identical with the A44, by the way. I gotta say, that is pretty cool to just be able to drive to another country like that. It's awesome. Yeah, it's really showing a deer. Das Reh. This icon represents German too. game and beasts, meaning wild animals. This is a Gefahrenzeichen, a danger sign, which is not only indicated by the color combination, but also by the triangular shape. It warns of something. In this case, you have to be extra careful because there is a chance that deer or other wild animals might cross the road here. Yes, even though it's an Autobahn. There are lots of woods and forest regions in many parts of Germany, and some of them are also close to the Autobahn. That's dangerous. Like, those deers can really kill people. I've seen accidents. It's awful. These white signs are changing signs, and they don't show anything as long as the Verkehr, the traffic, is normal. But when there's a stau, a traffic jam, or other obstacles which require additional rules for a certain period of time, signs like this one can turn around and show additional rules or information. For instance, speed limits or a warning of a traffic jam coming up ahead. This sign tells us that there is a Parkplatz in 500 meters, a parking area. These parking areas are useful for taking a break, for going to a toilet, etc.
As you can see, these parking areas are often used by LKW Fahrern, by truck drivers, but normal drivers can use them as well, of course. Another bigger variant of a spot like this is called a Raststätte. They usually feature a store for buying food or beverages and a Tankstelle, a gas station. On the German Autobahn, trucks are driving on the right lane, as long as they don't want to overtake another truck or vehicle, which, to be honest with you, can be quite a pain in the ass for other drivers. We yeah. even have an own term for a situation like that. So when a truck overtakes another truck, it's called das Elefantenrennen, the elephant race. <laughs> In Germany, we have. No, I, I do hate that when like, when a semi truck t overtakes another semi truck. It takes so long. A Rechtsverkehr, a right-hand traffic system, and in addition to that, we also have a Rechtsfahrgebot, an obligation to drive on the right side or on the right lane whenever there is normal traffic or enough space to do so. Which means you shouldn't be driving on the left lane all the time. When you're on an autobahn with three lanes, meaning with an additional middle lane. It's technically not forbidden to also remain on the middle lane as long as there's only a couple of cars driving on the right lane. The usual maximum speed for an LKW on the German Autobahn is 80 km per hour. This blue sign tells us that the A44 to Dortmund also leads to the airport Paderborn Lippstadt. Specific places or spots of interest like this one are usually shown in white and black. Now, if we wanted to drive to Bad Wünnenberg, we would have to change to the right lane in a thousand meters from here, which equals one kilometer. The 480 in the orange box indicates that we won't be driving to Bad Wünnenberg on an Autobahn though, but on a Bundesstraße, the B480. A Bundesstraße can but doesn't have to look similar to an Autobahn. And in contrast to a usual Autobahn, a Bundesstraße doesn't necessarily just have to be about rapid or fast traffic with vehicles. I'm learning so much in this video, it's crazy. <laughs> Grey signs like this one indicate that certain traffic rules are cancelled from here on. In this case, the Überholverbot, the ban on passing or the no passing zone for vehicles with a higher total weight than 3.5 tons is cancelled. From here on, they are allowed to overtake another vehicle again. The initial road sign that initiated the ban looks like this, by the way. We'll see it in a few minutes as well. These signs indicate that an Ausfahrt, an Autobahn exit, is coming up. Each stripe represents 100 meters and there are always three of these signs. In other words, in front of every Ausfahrt you'll always have three of these signs with three, two and one stripe. In Germany every Ausfahrt has a specific number. In this case the very next Ausfahrt is the Ausfahrt 61. An Anschlussstelle, an interchange or connection point like this one is indicated by a round white circle with a respective number in it. This almost inconspicuous sign with a U and a number refers to an Umleitungsstrecke, a detour track, which in case of a traffic jam leads you across a different track which later ends in the actual autobahn you were driving on before. Of course, when you're leaving the autobahn, you have to drive much slower than before. And in this case, the maximum allowed speed on the exit lane is 60 km per hour. A little trivia fact. The white and black pillars you're seeing on the right side are placed every 50 meters, which might also help to keep a certain distance to other vehicles in certain situations. Oh, okay. One thing I've noticed in this video, lots of uh, wind turbines, which I love seeing. So that's awesome that Germany has a ton of those, at least in this area. There's a lot though, I mean, holy crap. 
Crap. Obviously, and just to have stated this, these aren't all possible road signs you'll find on the German Autobahn. Of course not. There are quite a few more signs that might appear in general or even more often in certain regions. One of the newest signs most Germans might not even have seen yet is this. It's a new sign that was specifically added for self-driving cars. They are able to determine their exact position with these signs a bit better. This sign warns us of a potentially windy part of the Autobahn. As you will have noticed by now, there are many bushes and trees on each side of the Autobahn and they also help to reduce the amount of wind. Now, before I had my own driver's license, I always wondered what this strange and really simplistic sign means. It actually points to a recommended alternative route. You don't have to drive according to this recommendation, it just points out another possibility. Signs like these are called Hinweisschilder, guide signs. Yeah. That's cool. So many signs. This sign warns of nearby air traffic. Be especially careful and brace yourselves for suddenly appearing planes above you, or so. A little funny anecdote. Mike Portnoy, the former drummer of the American progressive metal band Dream Theater, has stated that when they were touring in Germany many years ago, he actually thought that Ausfahrt referred to a town, and it would be a pretty massive town therefore, because it appears every few kilometers. So the, the first time we toured Germany, I kept seeing this uh, the sign on the highway that said Ausfahrt, and I thought it was the name of a city. <laughs> And I would see it like every couple miles. I was like, holy shit, this city is huge. This, how big is Ausfahrt? And then I found out that it, it means exit. <laughs> so where are you from? Well, I'm from a town called Ausfahrt, said nobody ever. Honestly, I thought they were going to make a joke about what this kind of sounds like. Asphalt. That's even funnier. You didn't even know it meant exit. And here we have it. A speed limit on the Autobahn. 120. That's still pretty fast. That is still a This sign warns of so-called Rollsplit, loose gravel or chippings which is one of the reasons for this speed limit. Uh, one thing I'd like, I'd, I'd find interesting about uh, driving in Germany is like, what is the driver obedience like to speed limits? Because again, if the speed, like how, how enforced are these speed limits? Are there cops sitting with radar detectors, with laser? Like what, what is that like? Are there cameras? Do, do, does the German public generally follow the speed limits? I would guess they do, based off yesterday's video and just looking at the traffic. But uh, let me know in the comments. I'm curious. Because in the United States, speed limits are very loose suggestions, the way these people drive. I mean, you hop on a... <laughs> there's, always, there's almost always someone going like... I would have to find the kilometers per hour, but... Way faster than 120, that's what I'll tell y'all. Always. People drive like maniacs in the United States.
Whenever there is a traffic jam, you need to leave a Rettungsgasse, a corridor for emergency vehicle access. You always have to leave space between the very left and the other lanes to the right. And it doesn't matter how many lanes there are. And not only are the Foo Fighters a great band to listen to when you're cruising on the Autobahn, but they also know what's not allowed on it as well. Because there's no way back other than leaving the Autobahn via an official exit lane ahead of you, because turning around, Wenden, is not allowed. These digital signs might also appear here and there. The prohibitions and information they show can vary and change according to the current traffic situation. Every now and then you'll also see brownish signs like this one. No, they don't lead you to Nazis, but they rather inform you about a certain region a sightseeing spot or an interesting location. This one says Nature Resort Ansberger Wald, for Der Wald meaning forest, and Bilsteintal, the Bilstein Valley. At the moment it's barely possible to keep your Windschutzscheibe, your front shield or your windshield clean while driving on the Autobahn, because many mosquitoes are flying around and yeah, it's a pain in the ass. I hope though that this video wasn't a pain in the ass to watch. And if you've enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a like and to share it with other people. Hey, that was a really good video. Dave, David Italy, David Italy. Definitely gonna watch some more of his videos. That was, I, I, I thought he, he did a great job in uh, uh, giving an explanation of German road signs and traffic rules with a bit of some great German humor. So, really enjoyed that guys. and. Uh, definitely cleared some of my misconceptions on the Autobahn. I think one of the most surprising things was the not turning around. I guess that makes sense, but just the entirety of the Autobahn, no turning around. I just I think I would have to know how often the exits occur for that to make sense to me. I don't think that was said in the video, but definitely lots of signs, very well marked. I don't think you would need uh, a navigation app to, to drive on the Autobahn based off of how many signs I saw. And I mean, you could drive without a phone. They got so many damn phones along the thing. It's like, I'll just stop to call someone at that point. That is insane. I still can't believe that. But it makes, it's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for you guys. Good for you. I got to deal with this crap over here. Where people just, the left, the left lane being open, that's a, that's a fairy, like literally a fairy tale. It's a dream so deep in my imagination and it will never become reality in the United States. Just like so many other things for reasons I s will never understand. And everyone complains about it. Everyone wants it to change, and yet, still, it's like, what? What, who is, before I get into a little rant, I'm gonna end the video. Thank you all for watching. Hit the like button, hit subscribe. I appreciate you guys for all the support. And I'm gonna catch you all in the next one. Peace.